Hello tribe, somebody got her tea today. Not only do I have my tea, I have my seven African powers over there in the back burning on incense. I got some Nag Champa burning on incense. I got some sage and sandalwood candles burning. I got my, we are strapped and loaded and ready to go. Y'all ready? Get yourself a pen, get some paper. We are going deep today. This is going to be like a good old-fashioned Korean review seminar. Ooh, I miss those days, okay? Ooh, I was so young back then. Jeez, I miss that. Anyway, we are going to do a seminar today right here on our YouTube page. Let me tell you something about our tribe members. We got some banging tribe members, okay? One of the best tribe members on YouTube is Tam Me. Don't play with Tammy, okay? She is an official VIP um, student of the tribe, okay? Let me say something to you, okay? When I first met my mentor about 20... Oh, I don't want to get too deep, but you guys know how long ago it was. A long, long, long time ago, okay? When I met my mentor, I didn't go to him asking him for anything. I knew he was... You know, he could give me the information I was looking for, but I didn't want to go asking for anything. Because where I come from, there is this old adage that you have to earn your keep, okay? My mother used to say that all the time, earn your keep. For earning your keep or, you know, making an offering before you ask, okay, is something that I grew up with. And it's also something that our ancestors taught us on the temple walls of ancient Kemet. In Egypt, we see Mayat, the double winged goddess, okay? We also see her represented in the in the weighing of the scales, okay? Mayat, the weighing of the scales, they have to be balanced. However, here in the West, the scales are lopsided. That means in the West, we understand that some things are just not going, it ain't going to be balanced, okay? And, you know... What you put out, you may not get back, okay? That's the culture here in the West. Here in the U.S., people like to get more than, they, than, than they're than willing to offer. They want to take from you what they can get without having to make an offering. They want to get as much they can get for free, okay? That's here in the U.S., and it's sadly kind of impacting the rest of the world. It's a colonial world view. Get what you can get. And here is completely okay. However, in our African tradition, mayat or balance is absolutely necessary. What you put out, you get back. Reciprocity is a necess necessity in our culture. So um, before I went to my mentor, my first question was, how could I help? Okay, to to ask the question, how do I help? How do I get involved? How can I be a little bit more involved? Um, and, and to earn your key, offering, you make it an offering, okay? Being accessible, being available. And then after I built the relationship, I was able to ask, how do I gain an apprenticeship, okay? I want to learn. How do I become a student? But that is the proper way to do things. Before you take from someone, it's proper thing. It's not, it's not a, a, a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing um, to, to be a servant first. And we're not talking about servitude, okay? We're talking about allowing yourself to serve because I do believe that in, servant, in, in, in service, uh, not only do we, we find ourselves in service, but um, we are also able to connect with others in service, service first. Right. And then and then allow yourself to be serviced. That's the proper way to do things. I said all that because Tammy is one of those people. She's constantly in the comments. Yesterday, Tammy boosted every last one of my videos. There was one of my videos that was at 77 views for the longest. But because Tammy was in the comments and I was commenting back. Remember, I told you guys talk to me. I talk back. Tammy was in the comments. And when I looked at that video, it was at 109. That video had not moved at 
all for months. But because Tammy was making her offering in the comments, she was, uh, you know, she's in the comments like, hey guys, make sure you like, comment, or subscribe so sis can get views. Uh, Tammy is one of those people that you don't mind giving to. Because she doesn't mind making an offering, you know? And we're not talking about monetary. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about um, her her, her likes, her comments, her shares, her in the comments reminding other tribe members to be as engaged. Um, the 37 comments that we made together just yesterday. Right, Tammy? I talked back. So, I see you, Tammy. I see you. I see you. I honor you. And I honor that you understand that um, in any relationship, things must be reciprocal, right? I appreciate that. So, any comment you ever ask, drop it. You know I'm going to answer it. One, because it doesn't just serve you, right? Because when I respond to you in the comments, other people can see it. And so, that information now becomes a teachable moment to all the other people that come behind you, Tammy. So, I see it, and I know you see it, and I know why you're doing it. I know you're helping me out. I know. I know. it, And I honor that. I appreciate it. So, thank you very much. Now, let hear me. Hear me out, okay? If you are married and you have single friends, number one, that's that's a disaster waiting to happen by itself, okay? But if you are married and you have single friends, and I'll tell you why I think it's a disaster. If you're married and you have single friends, they're not going to understand the importance of your wifely duties, okay? A perfect example of that, and this is, I understand because I'm older, but I want to give you a story about my cousin Kima, and I did a video on it, but we lost it. My cousin Kima was taking me to go, we were dropping my books off at this at this particular unit, dropping my books off, setting up the, the book counter because she was helping me with that. At one point, I was going to bring her on to help me with the book tour, but that changed. Make a long story short, we were leaving, and I was in the back seat of a car, and she, you know, and she's taking me home. And she says, her husband calls. Hi, Rick. Rick, Rick calls. Her husband calls. And when I tell you, she was like, oh, my husband is home and my husband is hungry. She dropped me off with the quickness, okay? When I say she was like, oh, cousin, I got I to gotta go. Rick is home and he's hungry. So that meant whatever other duties I wanted her to do or whatever, you know, figure it out. My husband is home. I understood that because a wife is going to understand a wife and her, what her duties are. You're not going to say, oh, you're going to go, you're going to drop me off so you can go get feed him. Can he feed himself? No, 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 no. Those are friends who don't understand, okay? They do not understand. In fact, if we can add this picture, can we add a picture here? I know this is not the video that we were going to do it on, but add the picture of Reek and, and Cousin Kima. Because number one, Kima was on that beach and she was serving for the gods, okay? Y'all go ahead and put that picture there. Go and put it right there, all right? My cousin Kima understands wife duties at a whole nother level for her age. She's young, but she gets it, okay? For Father's Day, she said, I want to make sure that my husband is like, he understands. They She rented out, they went on a little beach, had a little tent, and she made him feel like a king. She gets it. If your friends don't understand what your wife duties are, please get some married friends so they can understand when it's time to release you and they understand that you're not going to always be available for them because you have duties at home listen to me your single friends are not going to appreciate what it means for you to be a wife that is dutiful okay less likely to take advice from your single friends okay i don't mean single um people can't give good advice it's not what i'm saying what I'm saying is that they're not, they're speaking from a projection period. They don't understand what it's like to say, oh, I'm unavailable on Friday because me and my sweetheart are going away this weekend. They're not going to be able to get that because they're single, okay? There's a very few people who understand what it means to be in a committed relationship and that you're not always available as you once were because you have duties it's like having another job you understand that's why i tell other you know women be sure you actually really want to marry because that's a whole nother you think you want or do you want the dress do you want the marriage with the duties or do you want the dress do you want the, the wedding do you want to walk down the aisle and do you want the ring or do you want the hard truth the hard truth is a marriage is not easy okay you're dealing with a whole nother being 
all right? And for those of us who have easier marriages than, than others, not all of them are that way. So I would say, if you are single, please, if you get into a very serious relationship, okay, alert your friends. I have a sweetheart now and things are going to change. And allow it to change. This is extremely healthy. So I'm just happy we, I, I was able to share. Cousin Kimmy, you knew I was supposed to, I was supposed to share this about two weeks ago in that video. Remember I told you about? But I, I shared it on this one. I hope you don't mind. It's still, you said I could share it. So here it is. But um, get you some get you some friends who understand uh, that in relationships there are some duties and responsibilities, and they don't mind that they have to share you with whoever's in your life right now. You have to share, you know, if, if your friend has a baby, now she's a mom, so now you're gonna have to share her with her children. If your if your friend has a husband, you're gonna now have to share. You have to share, but understand that your time is now going to severely be reduced. You have some friends who understand wife duties, who understand this, understands what it means to be in a serious relationship and that things are going to change when your life changes. Get you some friends who can clearly comprehend that. You're not going to be on the phone with them every day because you have duties and responsibilities and they understand that. Get you some true, authentic friends. But let me tell you something that could be helpful to you, okay? As you evolve and as you change, you are going to have some friends who naturally fall off. Let them fall okay trust me let them fall everyone can't go with you where you're going okay everyone cannot go with you where you're going allow those friends who fall off to fall off they're not all supposed to be with you forever some of them were supposed to come to you come with you to a certain period and then new ones were supposed to come in i know that whole idea no new friends no new friends no let in some new friends okay let in some new friends um i remember about a few years ago oh no a few years ago oh my god this was almost a decade or more ago um, a friend of mine had asked, she said, where are you going, where are you going tonight? I said, oh, I'm going to a meetup. And she's like, what are you, what's a meetup? I said, oh, I'm going to meet, meetup groups. And she said, what's a meetup group? You're not scared to go to a meetup? Is it strange? And I said, yep. Because I have a very different, uh, lifestyle, uh, than the people that I grew up with. The things that I enjoy is very different. So I had to make a comp conscious effort to meet people outside of my norm that will be interested in the things that I'm interested in, okay? Um, or I'd like to travel to places I like to travel to, okay? Which is a little different. I'm not the let's go to Miami type of girl, okay? Um, I am a whole, oh my gosh, did you know they just opened up a new, a new temple over there in Asheville, you know, or they got a new, you know, yoga center over and, you know, that's what I'm into. So I thought it was important for me to meet people who could be where I am. Okay. And so I started to do meetup groups and meetups were so fun for me. I went to uh, an Indian food meetup and then, and then the Ethiopian food meetup. And that's how I started to learn different foods and cultures and getting new friends because I started meetup groups. And so a lot of people were apprehensive about meetups, but trust me, the meetup platform is meetup.com. You sign up, you put your picture up there, your promo, I mean, your, your, your bio, and then you start journeying joining meetup groups based on what your interests are okay and so there's there's a lot of websites out there like that just just get you some friends that are going where you want to go have been where you want to go okay or where you are now okay but that friend that is in your ear right now telling you girl you need to leave him i'm telling you da da da, da. either she's single or Maybe she has nothing to lose, right? And so then both of you guys have nothing to lose when you lose what is yours, okay? So just just think about that, that the friend that you think might be your friend might actually be the one lighting candles with, incont you know, incantations. Anyway, 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 be very careful who you let touch your hair. Be careful who you let in your house, um, you know. My mom used to say, if you go into a house and you got a whole lot of pennies in the corner, you got a problem, okay? Don't put your purse down in the house that got pennies in the corner, okay? Again, African-American folklore, but metaphysically, there's some truth to it, okay? Um, the other thing, oh, I wanted to share, I think Tammy had asked me how to seduce a man. That's what I want to talk about. Um, and hold on, Tammy just responded again, you guys, all right? We're going to answer her right on, right here in this video. She literally just responded at 4.15, okay? Um, where is she? Uh-oh. 
We have more than 40 responses to each other. She says, it was two minutes ago she just responded. Tammy says, while reading the book, I wanted to share that I used to have really nice long hair, but my frenemy cut it. And since then, it has not grown. When I plait my hair, that particular area, that plaits disappear. What would Elder Eden advise a son of to me? Number one, never let another person touch your hair. Growing up, if my mom, and this, these are the African uh, folklores, and African-American folklores I'm about to share with you, okay? And my hair is actually about to fall down, so I'm going to let the braids fall down, okay? Because I still have my braids, if you haven't noticed. Anyway, never let anybody touch your hair, okay? In African-American folklore, the hair is extremely important, okay? A friend of me, someone who claims to like you, don't really like you. Back in the day, when my mother would do my hair, first of all, I used to have this thick, huge hair. Oh, my gosh. Anybody who knows me remembers how thick my hair was, okay? And my mother hated straightening my hair. She would straighten it with a straightening comb. She wouldn't let me get perms at that time because she said that the perm would destroy my hair. But when she would finish, I would have like a ball of hair because my hair was so thick and hard to detangle. But I would have a ball of hair. And what my mom would do is she would take it out of the comb, take it out of the brush, and she would burn it okay she would burn the hair now why in african-american folklore do they burn the hair there's this saying that if if your enemy gets to your hair you're in trouble okay we have a lot of superstitions we also have a lot of folklore um rooted in some uh some what we would call metaphysical truths okay so the hair is a is it it it's not only is it your antenna to the rest of the world, not only is it a way to communicate to the rest of the world, and it is your crown and your glory and all of those things, but it also holds a lot of power. One strand of DNA has all of the DNA, your DNA in it, okay? And I'm not just saying that from a, a folklore perspective. I'm talking about real true science. One strand of hair can tell a person whether or not you've had any drugs in your system recently. One strand of hair can tell you uh, your DNA, okay? Um, it is, your hair is you on the outside, okay? So yes, it's extremely important to keep people out of your hair. Now, in this particular case, Tammy says, okay, well, she cut my hair off and it hasn't grown back in that spot. Elder Eden is first going to say, don't ever let anyone else touch your hair again unless it is a very trusted hairdresser, okay? And even then, you got to be very weary, okay? People are very strange, evil, and 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 you have to be careful. It's your crown. It This is you, okay? It is an external example of you. Now, you can say, I am not my hair. I am not the skin. You know, the In the Irie song? But you're not your hair, but your hair is you, okay? If I decided to shave my head, that is my thing to do. But when a friend of me cuts your hair, and they're cutting it with that energy, okay? The hair is also, it's a conduit, okay? It's a conduit. It, 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 <laughs> they say it's antennas, but it's, it's sending and receiving energy, okay? That's why when I cut my dreadlocks off, it changed my whole energetic being because that was all of my energy trapped in my hair for as long as I've had my locks, okay? So in this case, when she cut your hair, Elder Eden will tell you to do this thing, okay? She would tell you, she would tell you to wash, she will tell you to wash your hair and and um, a, a sea salt water blend okay just regular water and sea salt okay salt can actually be drying into the hair but this is a blessing this is a blessing of the hair okay so you're not washing your hair through all of your follicles in the sea salt but you're going to make a bowl of sea salt okay a bowl of sea salt water and you are going to brush over your head with it and you are going to bless your head okay 
um, because a friend of me has a lot of energy. So you want to bless your hair with the sea salt, okay? And then you want to get some hyssop. I used to sell, I, I don't know if I have any hyssop oil around, but if I do, Tammy, I want to send you some. I don't know if I still have it, but any of you guys who used to follow the Lux on this website, Yolanda, if you're watching this, remember the hyssop, the blessed oil, the biblical oil I used to make? It has a hyssop in it. His stuff is, is extremely powerful. It's an extremely powerful spiritual oil. What you're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of his stuff, okay? You're going to breathe over it and you're going to pray in your hands, okay? If you are a Christian, you want to use uh, your Christian prayers. If you are a Muslim, you want to use your Islamic prayers. But you're going to pray over your crown. I want you to pray over your head, okay? Pray over it, and then you want to affirm that any negative energy trapped in my hair has now been removed. Any negative energy trapped in my hair is now removed. Any negative energy that is trapped in my hair is now removed. It is blessed with the Spirit of the Most High God. I am blessed by the Spirit of the Most High God. Okay? Now remember, your enemies, uh, you say they won't prosper. It doesn't mean that they're not going to come for you. They're going to come for you, okay? But you got to be very careful. Arm yourself, okay? Armor up. So get yourself some sea salt. Bless your hair. You're not going to wash your hair already because sea, sea salt can be very dry into the hair, okay? You're doing it just so that you can remove any negative energy that might be trapped in your head. And then you, after you do the first blessing of it, okay, then you're going to go in with some hyssop oil. And that is where you're going to really, really do your spirit work to protect your crown, protect your hair. And then... Um, Start looking into some horsetail. Oh, I love this stuff. Oh, I was so okay. Maybe we do need to add some alternative medicine stuff here, uh, some metaphysics to the channel because this is the stuff that gets me excited. Okay, so outside of your hyssop and your sea salt, okay, get some horsetail in your life. Horsetail is an herb that we use to help grow the hair. Okay, um, and I'm not sure what your age is right now, but if you are, and I'm just assuming here, I don't know how old you are. Spirit is telling me that you are. You might be a little okay. I'm I'm just going to go with what I'm feeling, okay? If you are above 42, if you're above 42, you might be having some estrogen dominance happening, okay? And that's because there's a hormonal, a hormonal shift happening within the body, okay? Remember what I said, you go to the maid and the mother and the crone. You're going into a new phase of your life and what happens is that thinning happens in the hair. For some people, it happens in spots. For some people, it happens all over. Um... And if it's accompanied by some stress, um, there might be a twofold thing that's happening there. It could be a spiritual connection happening from your frenemy, but it can also be a hormonal thing happening at the same time. So it could be an estrogen dominance situation that's happening that's calling your hair to either thin or not grow. All right. Um, but get yourself some horsetail um, to strengthen the actual hair itself externally okay you can take horsetail internally to actually help you with your, your hair growth there um, even in primrose oil if you are above age 42 there's capsules you can take that internally that'll help kind of balance out your estrogen and estrogen levels if you're suffering i don't want to go too deep because i don't want people to think i'm giving medical advice here but um as a alternative medicine practitioner what we use when it comes to hair thinning is we look at the totality of the being what they're experiencing one is there any stress in your life take care of that alleviate the stress two how are you hormonally where you are in your age where are you in your feminine journey are you approaching the chrome status that's the grandma status or, or you know where are you approaching life and there is where you will find where you are hormonally and what your knees are. Your knees are going to change as you age, okay? What you used to take when you were 25 as supplements and vitamins and minerals, you're absolutely going to need a whole different set once you're 45. And trust me, I know, okay? So take a look at where you are hormonally and get yourself some horsetail to strengthen the hair. You can wash your hair in horsetail. You can drink horsetail tea. Get yourself some horsetail tea, okay? Now listen, um... I love that. That kind of just changed the vibe of the of the um of the video. And so anything that we did prior to that, I want to keep this in. So for editing purposes, please keep this in the video and whatever we did prior to this that had nothing to do with this or um Elder Eden and, and Tammy's question, go ahead and edit it out. Okay? Um well, another question from Tammy. So hey sissy, going through my book 
on page 42 in the Divine Feminine, the Return to Divine Feminine, okay? You linked jealousy with singing and obesity with playing an instrument. Why are they opposite? Wonderful question. This is what gets me excited. She's serious about understanding and she's serious about her Asana Hood journey, learning about femininity, not the surface level stuff, but the real true power that comes from inside. Okay. So I answered and I said, now here we go. I love it. Someone is on her dean, and dean is 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 is, is a way to well, it's Islamic way meaning that you're doing all the things that you need to do to be compliant with Islam. But in the hood, when they when they say you're on your dean, it means that you are you're on your game, okay? You're on your eight your a game. So, so I said you are on your dean. They are not so much as opposite as they are ways to alleviate the other or elevate the other. They are indicators of where you are vibrationally, okay? Singing, dancing, etc. are high vibrational um, actions where jealousy behavior is, jealousy is a low frequency um, behavior, okay? So the higher you move in alignment, the higher you are, the higher you become, okay? The more aligned you become, Okay, um, there'll just be some things that you just don't want to entertain. Now, here's what I'm going to say. As you are evolving on your feminine journey, uh, on this on this Asana Hood journey, as you are evolving, there's some things that you just don't find interest in anymore. And that's because you vibrated out of that frequency. You vibrated out of that, that journey, right? Um, and... To be able to maintain several frequencies at one time, number one, could be dangerous, especially if you don't have your armor. Number two, um, it's it takes years of practice for that to happen. I'm talking about, I have I have an elder right now who's about 83 and still suffers with being able to do that, to occupy more than one space at any one time. But um, it can be done, but it takes a lot of time and experience and armoring up to do. I said that to say that at, at this stage of the game, if you're anything less than 55, you don't want to occupy more than one space. You want to occupy a specific frequency to get the life you want according to that, okay? So when I said that singing and dancing and gardening and all of those things uh, were indications that you were vibrating at a higher frequency, it means that you were more aligned with your intuition, more aligned with your with your femininity, okay? But to find out whether or not you are aligned aligned with that, then you have to be able to look at specific things to know that, wait a minute, I'm out of sorts, okay? Now, if you've been experiencing some jealousy or if you're envious of that neighbor who just got that brand new Bugatti, right? Or if your neighbor your neighbor just got that brand new Honda Civic, you're like, oh, why did she get that car? Or she just got that Bentley. Oh, she's probably renting it. All of those things, right? Those will let you know whether or not you are operating at the highest frequency possible when you are operating out of a space of love that means you're highly connected and most likely um in an attraction period okay so you are either attracting or you are either repelling the higher you are on the scale will let you know whether or not you are attracting or whether or not you're repelling if you are full of jealousy and envy and greed and all of those things then that's lower on the vibrational scale which means that you're probably repelling things away from you but the higher you go up on the scale means that you are attracting more so if a if you are a woman who is just happy to be alive you're energetic you are looking at that cup as half full and not half empty you're optimistic that's higher up on the scale and so you're most likely to be attracting things that you want versus repelling things that you want but when you are full of doubt and self-pity and shame well that's a lower frequency okay when you are full of doubt and shame and pity and resentment and bitterness and anger and frustration all of those things are really normal okay so don't get it twisted they're very normal human emotions um however the the question then becomes is this a human emotion for the moment or this is oh wow tribe post-editing karima 
I want to say that I am trying my hardest to give you guys the best quality possible based on the equipment that we have at hand. And we had an hour and 49 minutes of content. Unfortunately, we lost that due to um, me asking a part to be edited out, and so we lost the most important piece of this video. What I am really hoping is that you guys found something in this video worth noting. It didn't go as planned, but I'm hoping somebody vibes with it. Until next time, be empowered, be inspired, be well. Love y'all.